Gravitas, co-presented by Skoda. Kushak, choose what really matters. What I'm about to show you tonight is unprecedented. A woman tried to commit suicide inside the headquarters of a giant Chinese multinational. These images can be disturbing for some of our viewers. We advise viewer discretion. <laughs> It's unbelievable. This is on the streets of China, the headquarters of Evergrande in Shenzhen. Evergrande is China's biggest real estate player, the biggest company. Look at how protesters besieged its corporate office. They barged inside and refused to leave. You can see bottles of water, KFC takeout packages on the table. They were prepared for the long haul, clearly. The local police were helpless. They tried to contain the protesters with pepper spray. Now look at this. The same office witnessed a mass protest. The protesters took over the lobby of the company. The local police could not do very much. They just tried to keep them from entering the building. We've been getting such footage for the past few days. We haven't been able to verify some of the pictures. But this week, the offices of Evergrande, we can tell you, across China witness similar protests. Why are these people so angry? Why is China's biggest real estate player under attack? And why should you care about it? Well, here is why. In 2019, China remained silent about a disease outbreak. You would remember that. It gave the world the Wuhan virus pandemic. What you saw just now could be the beginning of a financial pandemic. China could export a global financial crisis, and these images from Evergrande offices could just be the beginning. I'll tell you why I say this. Evergrande is China's biggest real estate developer. It is now staring at bankruptcy. It owes, listen to this carefully, this company owes more than $300 billion. That is the level of debt, $300 billion. That's how much Evergrande must pay its creditors. But it doesn't have the money. The company has admitted that it faces a debt crisis, and this led to massive protests. Chinese citizens who bought homes in Evergrande projects now want their money back. They believe their hard-earned savings could be going down the drain. If they don't give me my money back, then I'll jump off a tall building. They've cheated me out of all my money. I have nothing left. Your conscience has been eaten by the dog. Do you think it's easy for us ordinary people to earn money? We sold everything we had, both of those apartments, so that we could buy a property with Evergrande because you, Evergrande, are one of the top 500 companies in the world. That's right, a Fortune 500 company staring at bankruptcy and it's never pretty when corporate giants fail. Now let me tell you about the scale of the problem. Right now, Evergrande has nearly 800 projects in China that remain unfinished. More than one million people are still waiting to move into their new homes, and there's a good chance they may never get to see them. That's because Evergrande's debt problem is just too big. Reports say the company builds 600,000 homes every year on average, 600,000 annually. That's massive. To build these projects, Evergrande borrows money, and Evergrande borrows a lot. In the last decade, the company's debt levels have grown by 56 times. Now, Evergrande stares at a mountain of debt, a mountain that is worth more than $300 billion. Who will fix this mess? What is Beijing doing? Nothing as of now. China, in its trademark dismissive style, says the situation is stable. I have also noticed some news about this on the internet recently. In general, some large real estate companies have encountered some difficulties during their production and operations. The impact on development of the entire industry needs to be observed. From the perspective of the operations of the real estate market, since the beginning of this year, various regions and various government departments have adhered to the principle of housing for living in not speculation, and continue to stabilize housing prices, line prices, and expectations. The overall situation has retained a stable trend. 
stable trend? A woman trying to commit suicide, a $300 billion, and China calls it a stable trend. How did Evergrande achieve this stable trend? It used the same philosophy of untamed borrowing to build more businesses. The company bought a football team to boot. It started a colossal football academy. It's a full-time boarding school that nurtures football players. It began building the world's biggest football stadium, shaped like a lotus with a capacity of 100,000 seats. And that's not all. Evergrande also started a bottled water brand. It was sold recently. It also jumped into an electric car business. They wanted to do everything. Until April this year, this business had a value of $87 billion and they hadn't sold a single car. $87 billion. Valuation is a scam. How will you repay your loans when your businesses don't make any money? Evergrande created the crisis it finds itself in. Then it started looking for parachutes. The company hired financial advisors to assess all options. They tried to raise money by selling assets. Nothing worked. The shares of Evergrande began tumbling. Since the beginning of this year, 2021, they've fallen by 81%. And you heard that right, 81%. Now the real estate giant has only one option left, a government bailout. Make no mistake about this. This is China's Lehman moment. 13 years ago, America's Lehman Brothers collapsed. It owed more than $600 billion. The collapse set off a chain reaction. It led to the global financial crisis of 2008. It affected everyone. Jobs were lost. Companies were shut. Too much misery. Ultimately, the U.S. government had to step in to save the banks. China faces the same choice now. If it chooses to let Evergrande fail, it could trigger a similar chain reaction the world over. There will be a bloodbath. Banks will lose big money. The burden will be transferred to people. Even in China, many of Evergrande's creditors are ordinary Chinese citizens. They will all suffer. They could lose their life savings if the company goes under. But China's choice is tough. It's not just about Evergrande. How many companies like Evergrande will the government save? That is the question they face. In a lot of ways, the story of Evergrande is the story of China. China's growth has been fueled by debt, especially in the real estate sector. Now that debt bubble has become so big that it could burst any moment. It poses a dire threat to the Chinese economy. Do you know how much money Chinese corporates owe in the next 12 months? $1.3 trillion. I'm going to repeat that. China's corporate bond tab now stands at $1.3 trillion. In the initial months of 2020, more than 200,000 companies in China declared bankruptcy. Now more companies could be added to this list. In 2019 and 2020, defaults intensified. Chinese corporates defaulted on more than $20 billion worth of debt. These companies were unable to pay the money back. How is China planning to solve this debt problem? With more debt, believe it or not. In 2020, Chinese banks extended a record $3 trillion in new loans. $3 trillion. For how long can China keep this debt-fueled surge going? Ultimately, the bubble will burst. The crisis at Evergrande could very well just do that. Pop the Chinese debt bubble. And just like the virus from Wuhan, it won't stay within China's borders. The whole world will feel the pain. Vyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move. Gravitas, co-presented by Skoda. Kushak, choose what really matters.